Good evening, I'm Vincent McCorry. This is Africa 54. Well, in a special videotaped message released by the White House, U.S. President Barack Obama has called on the people of Nigeria to stand together in rejecting violence and extremism and instead show their support for a more peaceful, secure and prosperous future. Hello. Today I want to speak directly to you, the people of Nigeria. Nigeria is a great nation and you can be proud of the progress you've made. Together you've won your independence, emerged from military rule, and strengthened democratic institutions. You've strived to overcome divisions and turn Nigeria's diversity into a source of strength. You've worked hard to improve the lives of your families and to build the largest economy in Africa. Now you have a historic opportunity to help write the next chapter of Nigeria's progress by voting in the upcoming elections. For elections to be credible, they must be free, fair, and peaceful. All Nigerians must be able to cast their votes without intimidation or fear. So I call on all leaders and candidates to make it clear to their supporters that violence has no place in democratic elections and that they will not incite, support, or engage in any kind of violence before, during, or after the votes are counted. I call on all Nigerians to peacefully express your views and to reject the voices of those who call for violence. And when elections are free and fair, it is the responsibility of all citizens to help keep the peace, no matter who wins. Successful elections and democratic progress will help Nigeria meet the urgent challenges you face today. Boko Haram, a brutal terrorist group that kills innocent men, women, and children, must be stopped. Hundreds of kidnapped children deserve to be returned to their families. Nigerians who have been forced to flee deserve to return to their homes. Boko Haram wants to destroy Nigeria and all that you have built. By casting your ballot, you can help secure your nation's progress. I'm told that there's a saying in your country, to keep Nigeria one is a task that must be done. Today, I urge all Nigerians, from all religions, all ethnic groups, and all regions, to come together and keep Nigeria one. And in this task of advancing the security, prosperity, and human rights of all Nigerians, you will continue to have a friend and partner in the United States of America. Now for more perspective on Saturday's presidential election, I'm joined by Sylvester Okere of USA Movement for the Buhari Osibanjo ticket. Welcome, Mr. Okere. Thank you so much. And from Nashville, Tennessee, we're joined live via Skype by Moses Ochono. He's a professor of African history at Vanderbilt University. Welcome, Professor. Thank you for having me. And let me start with you. The message from President Obama is keep the peace and uh, please keep the country as one. Are you concerned that uh, there could be violence in Nigeria during this election? Certainly, uh, the rhetoric has been especially heated during uh, these past few weeks. The exchanges have been bitter between the two major political parties, and everybody is uh, scared that there might be trouble during and after the elections. So I think uh, President Obama's message comes at the right time because it tells the major political actors that the world is watching. Uh, it also tells them to now tone down the rhetoric Mm -hmm. uh, to conduct themselves responsibly. But the, the, the fear of violence is there. Yes. Uh, but hopefully the elites will come together and recognize that uh, Nigeria is greater than their interests, their various interests. Now, Sylvester, <clears throat> we have seen violence in past elections. Uh, what is uh, different uh, between this election and the past election, which actually pitted uh, the same candidates that we are seeing t today? Yeah, I think uh, with what has happened in the past election, especially the June 12 and so on, should be a lesson uh, for us to learn. Especially at this moment, we should be celebrating our uh, democracy than the divisive uh, campaigns uh, everyone is running. Uh, could you imagine a situation where the First Lady uh, incited uh, uh, followers, if anybody is saying it, a mention change, he says stone them to death. You saw what happened in Ferguson. Why was it that the stepfather to uh, Brown 
uh, everyone accusing him of pointing the finger. In a situation where people are following you, you have to be very careful what you said. So people are prone to you know, take that serious, even though you may not mean it. But for her position to say such a thing, uh, people could be causing uh, havoc uh, down the road. But we hope that doesn't happen, and that's the reason we are calling for security. That's, uh, I mean, we don't see, need soldiers on the street. We don't need uh, policemen to harass or intimidate people. But they and, should and focus on uh, calming the tone. And actually, the government is saying that, uh, for example, ballot uh, as, uh, bo polling stations will be protected, not by soldiers, by, but by policemen. Uh, Professor Ochonu, uh, in terms of preparedness, uh, what, what do you make of uh, where the country is just three days before elections? Well, you can never you can never be hundred uh, percent prepared because there are several so many unknown factors, so many unpredictable factors that may play a factor in these elections. But I think INEC has to be commended for taking the PVC collection, that is the collection of the permanent voters' cards, to eighty one percent. That's remarkable. Uh, that eighty one percent of Nigeria's registered voters have collected their PVCs. You can never have one hundred percent collection rate. So in, uh, on that score, I think the preparation has been great. I think the area of concern is the security. Mm -hmm. How much security is there going to be? And oh. if someone decides to cause trouble or someone decides to perpetuate electoral fraud, will there be enough security to stop them in their tracks? Yeah. What if there is trouble after the outcome is uh, announced? Would there be enough security to also nip that in the bud? So that remains a concern. Yeah. Now, uh, uh, Sylvester, you know, uh, this time around, uh, for some see, for some, uh, they see this as the last chance uh, for Mr. Buhari. Uh, what chance does he stand anyway? He lost last time. The, what the, is different uh, that he is bringing to the well, team? Well, those saying is the last chance. I remember is the incumbent. A situation where some of them governors will say that this is a do or die affairs. This shouldn't be a do or die. This is an election. This is democracy. So they say this is his last chance. But the people themselves, when you watch the rallies, every state he go, you see a lot of crowd following him because people have tested and found out that the president has failed us. We need a change. You understand? So it's not about what they say, the propaganda, they use religion, they use tri tribal divisiveness. That is not what we want. We should focus on performance. We should focus on what he did not do and what he would do different. Yeah. And that is the main concern. How about, about, about those who say, well, when we remember back, he did crack down on those who were uh, advocating for free speech, uh, for the media. He killed some people, he detained some people, and they have those memories. Uh, those are the things people say, but. Some of the things that happened 16 years ago, we should not look, be looking at it when we are in trouble. And uh, we look at this man as someone who is very patriotic. He really want to protect his nation. Nigeria has gone beyond all those uh, rhetorics. Nigeria is in pain. Nigeria is bleeding. And if anyone loses focus of what is happening today and keep looking on what happened 12 years ago, 10 years ago, that person is not leading us right. Remember, we have two candidates to choose. And among the two, there is only one that has the best credential and experience to lead Nigeria. Nigeria is like a broken vehicle. We are calling for emergency rescue. That is what it is. Let's get a quick uh, response. Uh, from uh, uh, Professor Chonu, uh, what do you think is going to come out of this election? It's hard, to, it's hard to tell because, again, there are so many unknown factors. In previous elections, uh, Muhammadu Buhari ran in several elections in the past. Uh, in those elections, he's, uh, pr he, he appealed to a very narrow audience, a very narrow constituency, mainly in the northern part of the country. This election is different this, in the sense that his campaign has been very national has been focused on appealing to a national electorate. This time around, something else is different. The opposition is bigger. It's a bigger, much bigger tent. It's much more, uh, it's much more uh, better financed. So he has a lot more resources to work with. And yeah. so nobody knows. But, but well, again, but again to say this, in yeah. Africa, the factor of incumbency is always huge. So it remains to be seen whether Mr. Buhari's increased appeal can overcome the factor of incumbency, oh, okay. the advantage of incumbency. Our Professor Chonu, thank you. Thank you very much for joining us uh, today. And uh, Sylvester, I want to thank you very much also you. Uh, for your perspectives. Well, uh, Professor Chonu uh, is a professor of African history at Vanderbilt University. And Sylvester Kerry is the chairman of the USA movement for the Buhari Osibancho ticket.